Hi, my name is Arya, and I'm from a very small village in India. I was born on a dark, stormy night on Friday the 13th, which isn't a big deal except when your parents are crazy superstitious. Instead of letting out my first cry, I made some spit bubbles and giggled. This child is weird. Why isn't she crying? Look at her devilish smile. Once when I was two, I was playing with my grandmother and it was the first time I called out her name, Dadi. But it wasn't a celebration because the same day, she passed away. A few months later, when I learned to say my grandpa's name, Dada, he passed away too. Oh my god, this is the beginning to an end. If she says another word, she might kill us all. And the very same day, my uncles and aunts left the village with their entire families. And my parents just got weirder and crazier. I loved the color black, but they thought it was demonic. So they'd paint all my favorite black things pink. One time when I was five, I rescued a cute black cat from the streets and brought her home. I named her Kali, but my parents went ballistic. Black cats are evil. They'll bring death upon us. But he's my little Meow Meow. The only thing that could kill us is his cuteness. They didn't listen to a word I said and threw Kelly out of the house that night. And I was furious. I started screaming at the top of my lungs. And just then, there was a loud clap of thunder, followed by a loud bang. My parents looked out the window in horror to see an ancient sacred tree struck down by lightning. Mom turned as pale as paper, and Dad started praying to all 33 million gods. We're sorry. Please forgive us. We've been really, really bad. Yes, we're going to bring your precious little Kelly back right now. They immediately dashed out of the house and came back with Kelly at three in the morning. The very next day, they woke me up at five in the morning and took me to see my aunt, who lived in a far off village. When we got there, a woman dressed in black clothes came out. That's your aunt, go hug her. She's just like you. I got off reluctantly, but before I'd even reached my aunt, mom and dad were gone. They just left me there. I was about to burst into <laughs> tears, but my aunt gently took my hand. And when I went inside, my jaw dropped. The entire house was full of black ornaments and decorations. This place was heaven. You don't have to worry about anything, love. I'll take care of you from now on. For days, I thought my parents would come back for me, but they never did. And I didn't even mind because unlike them, my aunt adored me. She was a tarot card reader, but she never taught me any of it. Instead, she put me in school. When I went to school on the first day, I was in for a surprise. It was an empty piece of land with cows and buffaloes grazing there. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I thought they had a building around here somewhere. Don't worry, I'll teach you at home. Well, she did teach me a couple of things, but none of them were useful. Once when I was 13, I was playing in a field with the neighborhood kids when suddenly one of them got bit by a snake. Everyone started screaming and running around in panic. Just then, a man came and decided to take him to the temple instead of the hospital. What are you, crazy? He needs to go to a doctor right now. Are you out of your mind? God will heal him. Ah, this was nuts, but I wasn't gonna back off that easily. I bit him hard on his hand and he started screaming. This girl is crazy. She bit me, she bit me. Uh, I need to go to a doctor. No, you don't. God will heal you. Let's take you to the temple. He immediately backed off and someone called the doctor and the boy's life was saved. But strange rumors about me spread through the entire village and this stupid girl, Maya, she was the biggest gossip of them all. She's evil. She can talk to snakes. She's possessed. She tried to eat a man alive in front of my eyes. Oh yeah? Then you better stay away unless you want to get hurt. Well, it was fun scaring these silly kids away, but Maya wasn't one to be scared easily. She had this habit of picking on other people for no good reason. One time, when I was swimming in the lake by the jungle, she came along with her minions and grabbed all my clothes. Let's see you transform into a snake now, Anaconda. Hey, are you crazy? Give me my clothes back. But they just ran away with them. OMG, what was I gonna do now? Make a gown out of leaves? Well, it wasn't such a bad idea, but I was furious at Maya. I had to take my revenge. One day, I saw her making out with a guy behind a barn, and I just knew what I had to do. 
I picked a huge chunk of cow dung lying on the ground, made a ball out of it, and threw it at her. Ew, gross, who did that? Come out this instant. The guy who was with her ran away with the speed of a bullet, but Maya looked raging mad. As I was tiptoeing away, I accidentally stepped on a thorn and screamed out loud. You, you witch, I knew it was you, you evil witch. You're so gone today. And do you think I'll spare you? Then she picked a chunk of cow dung and we broke out into a massive fight. But just as I was about to throw a huge chunk right in her face, she screamed. No, not my face. I can't afford to get pimples. It's my wedding in two weeks. What, wedding? But she was just 14. For a second, I thought she was bluffing, but no, she was actually getting married. In fact, her parents were going crazy, boasting about her grand wedding all through the village. And Maya, she was getting all the attention she craved for. But this was crazy. She was just a kid. On the day of her engagement, my aunt took me to the party. When all the people left, I saw Maya crying all alone. Something was wrong. Maya, are you okay? Get off me, witch. I don't want your sympathy. It's bad enough I'm getting married without my will. Just go away. But, but you looked so happy, and you always tell everyone how excited you are. I lie, because I don't have an option. That's just how things are done here, okay? But a dummy like you would never understand. Go away, for God's sake. This was so wrong. Even though I didn't like her that much, there was no way I was gonna let it happen. I had to do something. So I decided I was gonna kidnap the groom and lock him up in a room. After all, it wasn't just about one girl. It was about all the young kids in the village and their future. On the night of the wedding ceremony, I snuck into the venue. But just then, I tripped over something and crashed into the pole, holding the weight of the entire tent. The tent came crashing down, and within seconds, everything caught fire. People started running around like crazy. And just then, Maya came out screaming. I thought she'd thank me for saving her life, but she attacked me instead. You ruined my wedding, you witch. I had been preparing it for weeks. What? Something was really wrong with my ears. Her thank you sounded more like, I'm gonna kill you, witch. Suddenly, a man came rushing in and said, The crops, they're, they're burning. The fire has spread to the fields. We're all ruined. OMG, what was it now? All of this because of a stupid tripping incident? But instead of running to the crop fields, everyone looked at me in shock, and I knew that look too well. I was so doomed. I ran home to save my butt and locked all the doors and windows. Just then my aunt came running. What's wrong? What happened? Who's knocking like a mad dog on the door? No, don't open that. There were angry villagers chanting outside that they wanted to throw me out of the village this instant. She's the devil. She put our crops on fire. We can't let her live with us anymore. What? It was all a freaking mistake. Why were they acting this crazy? For the first time, I felt so bad and almost burst into tears. My aunt hugged me tight and said, don't worry, my child, I got this. She went out and told the villagers that I had already fled from the village, but the villagers wouldn't believe her. They stayed outside my house day and night until they were sure that I'd actually left. My aunt kept me hidden inside the house for months until one day I heard that there was a serious illness spreading all through the nearby villages. Auntie, I'm so scared. What's gonna happen? I have no idea, Arya, but no matter what, Promise me, you won't step outside of the house. Well, I did as she asked, but then one day, she also fell seriously ill, and I had no choice but to leave the house to get her medicine. But as soon as the villagers saw me, their faces turned pale white. They were running away from me and screaming at the top of their lungs. She's back! She's back! The devil is back! She's brought a new plague with her to kill us all this time! What? Why were they all so freaking dumb? But I didn't care. I had something more important to do. I rushed to the hospital, but as soon as I got there, even the doctors looked at me in shock. What? Did they also think I was a freak? A doctor called me and asked why I had no red dots on my body like everyone else. Well, I bathe daily. I guess that's why. He looked at me confused, but then they conducted a whole lot of tests on me. I was all freaked out. Why were they doing all this? I wasn't some freaking alien. 
Moments later, the nurse came out and screamed, You were right, sir. She's the one. The one? What the one? It turned out they found the antibodies to the disease in my blood. Apparently, my blood was now the cure to the deadly disease that was spreading, and I could save everyone's life. When everyone recovered, the doctors told all the villagers that it was me who saved lives. Everyone looked shocked at first, but then they started screaming. Goddess! Goddess! She's a goddess! She saved our lives! People started coming to me with gifts and presents. It was all so crazy. For God's sake, what was wrong with these people? No, stop it, please. I'm no goddess, and neither am I the devil. I'm just a normal human being like you people. It was just a stroke of luck that my blood had the cure. For the first time, I felt the people were actually listening to me. If you really want to give me something, then please stop with these stupid superstitions and abolish all the age-old rules that are ruining our kids' lives and their futures. We don't need that. We need schools and facilities and better hospitals so that more lives can be saved. After that, there was a long silence, and I was all ready to sneak my butt out of that place in case they got mad at me again. But thankfully, they understood. After that, I left the village to go to school and study more about science and medicine, and I was appointed the new chief of the village. I'd been swiping on Tinder for weeks and hadn't even had one match. I didn't get it. It's not like I was butt ugly or anything. Finally, my phone beeped. I'd matched with someone. He asked me to meet in an hour at a nearby cafe, and so I quickly changed into a cute outfit and rushed out the door. When I saw him, I was shocked. He was sitting in a booth with a girl opposite him. I couldn't believe it. I'd heard this kind of thing could happen, where a guy would have two dates in a row. I decided to walk by and see if he noticed me. Well, he did, and he legit screamed, and in the process, knocked his soda all over his date. Ha! <laughs> Served them both right. But then he stood up and started pointing at me and said, There's two of you. The girl turned around and I didn't know whether to laugh or cry. It was my sister. My identical twin sister, to be precise. Belle, what are you playing at? I said. She got annoyed at me and said I'd ruined her new dress by turning up like that and giving her date a fright. She said she'd come in for a coffee and this guy had run up to her and started chatting. I told her I'd match with him on Tinder and that he was waiting for me. The whole time, the guy just stood there, looking back and forth between us. We must have been making a lot of noise because suddenly some other random guy came up to us and in a not-so-subtle way told the guy that I was supposed to be on a date with that me and my sister had been with everyone in town and that he should run while he still had the chance. Excuse me, I said. This was supposed to be my first date ever. Like, the first date I've ever been on in my life. But the random guy just burst out laughing and said, Sure, and I'm the Queen of England. Then he walked off and my date left with him. As they walked out the door, I heard the waiter say, Sorry, bud. Those girls are always up to no good. That was the final straw. I'd had it with my sister. My whole life, she'd always gotten her way. The only reason she even graduated high school was because she made me sit her exams. I felt like such an idiot. No wonder I'd only had one match on Tinder. Everyone probably assumed I was my sister and wanted to run for the hills. I mean, I knew my sister was pretty active in the dating scene, but I didn't know she was basically hooking up with every guy she set her eyes upon. I stormed out of the cafe and she ran after me. She said it was just coincidence what had happened in the cafe and that she hadn't dated that many guys, but I didn't believe her. She'd always been like this. She used to steal my toys, then my friends, and now my first date ever. I was 21 and all I wanted was to meet a nice guy and marry him. How hard could it be? I tried Tinder a few more times, but one guy messaged me saying I was a liar, that my name wasn't Cassie, it was Belle, and that if I thought I could fool him, I had another thing coming. Then he blocked me. I'd been away at college for three years and I'd been so focused on my studies. I hadn't made any time for guys. Now I was back home and my sister had messed everything up, but I wasn't going to give up that easily. The next time I saw her heading out for a date, I followed her. I wanted to see what she did that made guys so weary of her. Did she just go on one date, then dump them? Also, I kind of wanted to get back at her for what she'd done to me. I kept a safe distance and watched as she met this guy in the park. They chatted for a bit, then they went off together. I tried to follow, but I lost sight of them. An old woman noticed me and said, 
Oh dear, I think I'm seeing double. Then she wandered off. Damn, I couldn't believe I'd lost them. I waited for ages and eventually they came back, and my sister kissed him goodbye and went off to her car. For some reason, he stayed in the park, and after 20 minutes, I decided I had nothing to lose. I walked up to him and he started grinning. Back for more already, he said. I have no idea why, but I told him that yes, I missed him already and maybe we could hang out some more. He looked at my outfit and frowned. Then I said I'd quickly change because I was feeling cold, and then he shrugged his shoulders and said I looked even cuter now. The awkward part was that I didn't even know his name, but I couldn't exactly ask him now. We ended up chatting for hours and I apologized for making a move so quickly. And he said it had been fun, but maybe we should slow down and get to know each other properly first. I agreed. And then when he went to the bathroom, I took his phone and quickly changed my sister's number in his phone to my number. At least I knew his name now, Kenneth. We said goodbye and I went home and waited until my sister was asleep. Then I took her phone and deleted his number and blocked him on her Tinder. I just had hoped that she didn't notice. The next morning, I asked about her date the day before. She said he wasn't her type and that she wouldn't see him again. Thank God, I thought, but there was just one small problem. I really liked him, but he thought I was my sister. I had to ask Belle what she talked about with him, so I didn't mess up the next time I saw him. But she just winked at me and said, we didn't really do much talking, if you know what I mean. I texted him straight away and said I'd really enjoyed yesterday and couldn't wait to see him again. He replied immediately and asked if I wanted to go watch a movie that night. Wow, someone actually wanted to go on a date with me. I mean, okay, he thought I was Belle, but so what? It was me he actually liked, right? That night we went to the movies and I told my sister I was going to my friend's house. She just teased me if she knew I had a date. And of course, she had another date already. She moved on fast. At the movies, we waited in line to buy popcorn and when we got to the front, the girl said, One box not enough? I was confused. Then I realized what was going on. This couldn't be happening. I told Kenneth I wasn't feeling well, and he said he was sure I'd feel better after taking a seat. Ugh, I just wanted to get out of there. What were the chances that both me and Belle were on dates at exactly the same movie theater? He went to the bathroom and I stood there waiting nervously. Then I felt a hand on my back and heard a voice saying, Ready, babe? Movie starts in five. But it wasn't Kenneth's voice. No! I told him I needed to use the toilet quickly, but he was like, didn't you just go? So I laughed and said, yep, tiny bladder, meet you in the back row. Then I ran into the toilets. I knew my sister was in there and I just had to hope she didn't see me. Luckily, she was still in the cubicle, but she was on the phone and already arranging her next date. She was insane, still on one date and already planning the next one. I couldn't risk her going out and bumping it to Kenneth. So I went back out and luckily the coast was clear. Her date was gone, and it was just Kenneth standing there. I told him I'd been puking and really needed to go home, so we left. He seemed disappointed, but said we could just go see the movie another time. I decided the only way to date Kenneth was to do it in secret from now on. I knew I'd have to come clean at some point, but I wasn't ready for that yet. He kept asking to meet my family, but I always said they were too busy, and eventually he stopped asking. We always hung out at his place, which suited me fine. After a few months, my sister announced that she was taking a trip to visit a friend on the West Coast. She just up and left, which I found totally weird. I'd been spending a lot of time with Kenneth, so I hadn't been home much. But our mom said she was acting kind of quiet, and she thought something might be wrong. Meanwhile, Kenneth still called me Belle. It was starting to bug me. This whole time, I'd always thought I was nicer than my sister, but in reality, I was just as bad as her. I tried calling her, and every time she answered, she said she was fine but I had a feeling something was up. Maybe she knew I was dating Kenneth and had left because she felt hurt, but then she finally told me the real reason she'd left. She said she was pregnant and she was trying to figure out who the dad was. My heart almost stopped. Then she said she was 99% sure it was this guy who lived on the West Coast, so she'd gone there to find him and he was super happy, and now they were thinking about getting married. I couldn't believe it. I never thought my sister was the kind of person to get married. This whole time, my goal had been to find a nice guy to marry, and she'd beat me to it. After we hung up the phone, I decided to tell her that I was dating someone. I called her back, and she said she was so happy for me and couldn't wait to meet him. I chickened out from telling her his name, though, but she'd find out eventually. That night, I was going to Kenneth's for dinner with his parents. He picked me up, and as soon as I got in the car, I knew something was wrong. He looked angry, and he took out his phone and showed me a picture. It was my sister and her boyfriend at Disneyland in L.A. He said his cousin had just sent him this pic and did I want to explain myself. 
The picture had been taken the weekend before when I'd canceled my date with Kenneth because I hadn't been feeling well, but now he didn't believe me. He thought I was cheating on him. Oh no, I had to tell him. Actually, that's my twin sister, I said. And he looked at me like I was insane and told me to get out of his car. But I begged him to listen to me. I told him that she was actually Belle and I was Cassie. And that I pretended to be her the first day in the park because I was getting revenge on her. That I'd actually fallen for him. And by then it felt too late to admit what I'd done. Then I told him my sister had moved to LA to live with her fiancé. I even showed him a photo of me and Belle together so he'd believe me. He told me to get out of his car and he said he never wanted to see me again. I was devastated. I'd completely messed up. Kenneth stopped replying to my messages and I found it hard to go to work and act like a normal person. I missed him so much and I started to miss my sister too, even if she had kind of driven me to do this in the first place. After a few months, she came home. Her bump was huge. She was only eight weeks away from popping, but she was alone and I knew that meant her and her fiance had broken up. She said he knew he couldn't be the father because the dates didn't match up. So he told her to go home and now she was going to be a single mom. She asked about the guy I'd been dating and I said he'd broken up with me too. And she said, oh man, all guys are the same. But I was lying. You see, I started seeing more of his He said he missed me so much too and that life felt empty without him. So we can meet him At the same time, my sister and I started to grow even closer and when she gave birth, I was right there with her. I told her to do a fraternity test to figure out who the dad was, but she said she didn't care. She could manage it alone. When my nephew was born, though, I knew something was up. He had thick red hair and that was old to me one. And when she saw him for the first time, she knew it too. I know who the dad is, she said. And I wanted to scream because I knew exactly who the dad was too. And that meant my life wasn't over. Kenneth had red hair. I decided there was only one big boy. An hour later, Kenneth her here and then before I could even say anything he blurted out that he'd been dating me for the past nine months and my sister looked at me with so much hurt in her eyes what should have been the happiest moment of her life had just turned into a complete disaster and it was all my fault you're probably assuming that my sister and Kenneth got back together to raise their son right well not exactly you see Kenneth and I were seriously in love he wanted to marry me and although it's weird to marry the man who got your sister pregnant these things happen my sister eventually forgave me, but I know we'll have a lot of explaining to do in the future. Their son is going to wonder why his dad is also his uncle. Whenever Kenneth and I take him out to play, people just assume he's my baby. We're getting married soon, and who knows, maybe we'll have a baby not long after. His cousin will also be his half-brother. Yep, it's kind of complicated, but I got what I wanted in the end, and maybe now my sister will think twice before dating every guy in town.